Hey, Stewart's Chapel, this is Don Pearson, and Don counts behind the camera. We're in the church's yard, and this is Tuesday's devotion, and I'm continuing to share some of the stories of my life and connecting them to Scripture. I'm going to read James 5, 16, a story that we read, or I mean, a, a Scripture we read when we went through James. James 5, 16. James 5, 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I'm going to tell you two stories about healing. Both were in Bailey's. Now, I've experienced and seen healing in other places, but both of these were directly related to prayer. The first one is about Juan Brasino, the, the pastor that I shared with you yesterday. Juan Brasino was laid up in the Belmopan Hospital. He was there to die. The doctors had already told him that he was going to die. Now, that was before my time. That was before I ever met uh, Juan Brasino. Juan wasn't a Christian then. There was a man, though, that I did know named Drury Trailer. Drury, Tra Drury Trailer Taylor was a rice farmer, a rice farmer from Arkansas, who would come to Bailey's, sort of like Gary Williams, who would come to Bailey's um, at least once a year for several weeks and sometimes even months. Drewy Taylor, Taylor loved Bailey's and he loved the Bailey'sians. On this particular day, he had gone to the Belmopan Hospital to pray for the people. As he is going from bed to bed, through their wards. They didn't have really rooms at the time. It was more of a, a ward, hospital ward situation. As he's going behind each curtain to bed to bed, he comes to Juan Brasino. Now Juan Brasino is not a believer at that time. And Juan Brasino has just been told that he is going to die. Drury Trailer comes up to him. Drury Trailer is convinced that he is going to die. Drury Trailer shares Jesus Christ with Juan Brasino. Juan Brasino gladly opens his life, arms, and heart to Jesus Christ. He becomes saved. But not only was he saved, at that very moment something he feels happens to his body. He is healed. Not only is he healed and not only is he saved, God begins to call him to preach what he has just heard to the people that he loved. That's how he gets to Armenia. Well, he, come, he, he, he miraculously is healed. It's just a few days and he's out of the hospital again. He shares, Drury Trailer shares with Juan's wife and she also becomes a believer. Together with Drury Trailer, they start going to, to Armenia village and, and, and Juan starts witnessing to the people. And pretty soon, he's got a crowd of believers, and that's how that church got started. Drury Trailer prayed for Juan to be, to be saved. But God not only saved him, God healed him, and God called him. The second story also happened in Belize and happened in San Ignacio. There are many people at the church in San Ignacio that may remember this story. In fact, I know many of you do listen from San Ignacio. Um, this, I can't even remember what year it was. And some of you may remember an older lady named Doña Juanita. Doña Juanita was a little old lady and there was, uh, and I can, Don Zach. Don Zach was her husband's name. They were both very old and, and very poor. I think this happened on a Sunday because where I remember I was at church and there was a group of people at church. But anyway, word was sent to us that Doña Juanita was very, very sick. So a whole group of us, me, my wife, my children, uh, Mr. Bardalis, Mrs. Bardalis, uh, many of the youth, just a whole, like an army from the church, moved to Doña Juanita's home. When we come there, she was living in a little bitty home and a little bitty place, literally a, not much more than a closet. When we came in, she was lying there. I remember looking at her and thinking, 
She's not going to live. She will not survive. What, she had been sick for a while, but that wasn't what was bringing her to the point of death. Someone had told her of this concoction, this, this remedy for her sickness, that if she made it, she could be well. Now, I don't remember everything that was in it, but I do remember that it included milk, uh, some Kool-Aid, and Bengay, and a few other things, and she mixed it all together. She wasn't supposed to drink it. Some of the bit, she wasn't supposed to drink the Bengay, but she, she drank all of this together, and it basically ended up being poison. She had poisoned herself, and she didn't even know it. Mr. Bardalis, my wife and I, Mrs. Bardalis, and many of us, we just we couldn't all fit into the room. And so the, those of us that could, we laid our hands on her, and we prayed desperately for her to be well. And it was it is it was just like it was when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Doña Juanita gets up. She's perfectly fine. She begins to worship with us. And she continued to worship with us until, well, I don't know how many years it was at, from that point until we came home. Let me tell you something. I recognize that but first of all, I want to go to heaven. You know what? Every time somebody talks about life, life is just not what it's supposed to be, you know, and everything. Look, I don't want to stay here forever. I really believe in what heaven is. I want to go to heaven. And the older I get, the more excited I get about that. I don't want to be stuck here. I, mean, I got a feeling there's coming going to come to a day when I'm not going to want somebody to pray for me to be healed. Not in the sense that where I get to stay here. Because I believe more than anything that there's a place I want to go to. That where I will have no more pain, no more anything. And it's all because of what Jesus Christ did in my life to save me. I want to tell you something. There are times though when God intervenes through His people as they pray for one another. Love you, Stewart's Chapel.